Eridan, examine block. You conveniently return to your respite block so that we may study your variety of interests. This was very considerate of you. Flowing through your veins is nearly the richest blood the Hemospectrum has to offer, penultimate on the scale. As such, you are a Sea Dweller, a subrace of troll distinct from the commoners by mutation and habitat, a caste which rules over the entire species. But ruling, in your view, is not enough. You have an overpowering genocide complex and have made it your sworn duty to kill all land dwellers. You've amassed resources and deadly weaponry from around the world for this ambition through many sweeps of extreme role-playing, while pursuing a working doomsday device which will bring Armageddon to all those on the surface. Haven't had much luck with that, but maybe tonight's your night. You hold a fascination for military history and legendary conquerors. You have dubiously modeled your profile and exploits after the most notorious figures and their stories, which are bristling with the glory of victory and the sting of defeat and political machinations and romantic intrigue. It is an image you are careful to craft through exaggerated emotional theatrics, and your penchant for mass murder notwithstanding, people tend to regard you as a bit of a tool. You also like magic, even though you know it to be fake. Like a made-up friend the way wizards are. Made up make-believe, fakey fake fakes. It's still fun, though. Your troll tag is Caligula's Aquarium, and you speak with a wary, weird, and sort of wary sounding accent. You hold off on doing anything for the moment on account of courtesy to fellow royalty. On the subject of courtesy, you have also returned to your block so we can get a better look at you. Again, quite considerate. Royalty sure is civilized. You are also a sea dweller. You have the most noble blood possible, the only of your kind known to possess it, and the only to share it with the Globogolip, a deep sea monster also known as the Rift's Carbuncle, emissary to the Harbor Terrors, or in more hushed tones, Speaker of the Vast Glove. This makes you the heir apparent for Alternian rulership, which ordinarily would place you in considerable jeopardy. Her imperious condescension would steer the flagship from the fleet and make an attempt on your life herself, if not for the protection of your monstrous Lucis. And if not forewarned of your race's extinction by the whispers of that Lucis, you would have big plans for the throne. All the plans. All of them. You would redefine what it means to be cold in troll society. Under your rule, it would mean caring for the unfit and infirm rather than exterminating them. And you have put this idea into practice by calling the fauna of the deep. You tend to wild and beautiful aquatic hoof beasts, grooming and feeding them daily. You capture and cage cuttlefish by the thousands for their own good, and also because they are funny and colorful and you love them. They often swim through the bars of their cages, but that is fine. You run your whole palace as a sort of wildlife adoption facility, even if the wildlife's need for care is dubious at best, and the practice really just amounts to an elaborate role-playing scenario. It's still fun, though. You would also look forward to using your reign to unite the two races. You were told you would do this one day by your Lucis, even if it does contradict her message of extinction. Oh well. You suppose not all prophecies can come true? Your troll tag is Cuttlefish Color and you have a hard time not getting really excited about practically everything! What will you both do? Aridin and Feffery. Do something ridiculous. Yes! Fuck yes! Hell. Fucking. Yes! Aridin. Bother Feffery! <laughs>
None of your plots to kill the land dwellers ever work out, and every doomsday device you get your hands on turns out to be a piece of junk. So? I gotta keep trying! That's how all the great military masterminds became great, through upright perseverance. I think, deep down, you stack these plots against you so you fail because you know it's wrong. It isn't wrong! I'm not going to explain it to you again. At this point, all you need to know is it's important to me, and I'm doing it for us. I mean, our kind. Nobody understands, not even you. This is the last time I will say this. We are not better than anybody! Glub! Psh, Hemo Spectrum begs to differ. If you're as sickened as them as you say, why do you spend so much time on land? You can't have the sort of affinity for our kind that you profess if you've only spent, what, a few days underwater, maybe, in your whole life? Whatever! I have to keep an eye on him up here. It's all about tactics. What about your friends? Do you ever think about them? If they are beneath you, then they have to die too. And I know you like talking to some of them. You say you hate them, but I think you are pretending. History is full of cases where a conqueror's consort were with members of the enemy in a mannerly way before wiping them out. Even going as far as growing fond of some. It's only civilized. Mm-hmm. I have a fishy feeling that this stupid doomsday machine thing is just another excuse to consort. With someone in particular. All your feelings are fishy. <laughs> glub, 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 glub. Ah! Don't you glub in that tone of glub with me, mister. Oh, glub. In what a dumbass, bubbly sound and fish noise, I will want to glub. Oh, shit. You are angling for so much trouble now. Okay, please. Let's just not get into the whole fucking fish pun thing again, okay? Like, will we get it? We are nautically themed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know wh wh why she ignores me. I guess she's just bored with me. We had it all set up for her to give me this thing tonight that probably doesn't even work, but yeah, maybe that wasn't the point. I mean, you think we have a pretty good ride we'll be going, right? Or at least had. It was pretty fucking bitter and contentious for a while there, and there was some good chemistry. I don't know wh what happened. I guess? I wouldn't really know. Sometimes people just drift away, I think. Or just aren't as into the quadrant as the other wants to be. So, you really think your feelings for her run that dark? It doesn't matter. Like I said, she's bored shitless. I guess I'm not as good an adversary as I thought. That is so ridiculous. Any girl would be lucky to have a kismesis as diabolical as you. Especially that one. Who knows what her problem is? She has issues. Uh, well, okay. Thanks for saying so. You know, I'm not sure why we never talk about our romantic aspirations. We should more often. It's kind of exciting. <laughs> Shrug. Probably because you fill your gossip quota with your nubby-horned bro. You leave nothing left to talk about with your dear, sweet Moirail. We are supposed to help each other with that stuff too, remember? Maybe. Seems kinda... odd, though. Your stupid fishy face is what's odd! Have you ever thought about that? Fine. Well, those are my stupid feelings. But what about yours? Seems to me like you get along too well with everybody to be harboring any black sentiments. Um, yeah. I can't think of anybody I feel that way about. Maybe I'm just not old enough to have those feelings yet? We are still pretty young, you know. Yeah. So, okay. Those are your black leanings. What about red, Aridan? <laughs> hmm? Oh, God. Is there a lucky lady you are waxing scarlet for? Or a lucky fellow? Uh... Tell me! And don't pretend you're all embarrassed suddenly. <laughs> okay, Feth, this is none of your damn business! <sighs> I gotta go! Be back later when it's time to play! 
Oh. Aridin, go get a beverage. Another emotionally exhausting conversation. Too many feelings and problems. It couldn't be any clearer to you. You and this sea princess have splashed down hard into the Moirail zone, and now you don't know which way's upward. Perhaps tonight you will reveal your true feelings toward her and end these exaggerated emotional theatrics once and for all, one way or another. You need a stiff drink. But... Uh, not this swill. You're not that desperate. Aridin, check fridge. You pay a visit to what the common land dwellers refer to as a thermal hull, instead of the more aristocratic and especially esoteric and alien-sounding term, a refrigerator. Aridin, open it. A bunch of unbelievably shitty wands tumble out. Of course you knew these were in here. You're not even sure why you looked. Feffery, go get a beverage. Another emotionally exhausting conversation. Too many feelings and problems. That guy. Talk about a high-maintenance Moirail. Perhaps tonight you will reveal your true feelings toward him and end these exaggerated emotional theatrics one way or another. You need a sugary drink. Glob! This is stupid! Feffery, disarm. You decide to unwind and take your mind off the drama for a while before starting the game. You nearly forgot this is going to be an exciting night. Everything you are about to do next is exciting. It is always exciting. You are excited. You unequip Sidon's Entente, a golden double calling fork, a legendary weapon reserved for royalty and generally only used for ceremonial purposes. Aridin, disarm. You unequip Ahab's crosshairs, which is yet another legendary weapon, about as powerful as your kind of Stratus will allow. You plundered it from a ghost ship during a particularly challenging campaign. It was the same old Gamblignant ship from which your accomplice at the time also plundered a set of extraordinarily powerful dice. You almost feel sorry for the adversaries you will face tonight. They will likely pose neither team much challenge at all. Unless one of the links in the prototyping chain includes something especially huge and monstrous, but really, what are the odds of that happening? Aridin, bother Vriska. On the subject of your old accomplice slash rival, you guess you'll try talking to her one more time, even though you know she won't answer. You know she is bored shitless with you and your drama. You are almost starting not to care about this stupid doomsday device, which probably won't even work. She probably knows you know it won't work. She has probably put all the pieces together and knows it was an elaborate ruse to be in cahoots with her again. And she just went along with it, playing you for a chump. You are such an idiot! Yeah, see? No answer. Bored shitless, just like you thought. She has much hotter irons in the fire than you these days. But it wasn't that long ago that you were the hottest iron. At the height of your prowess as Seagriffs, Marquis, Mindfang, and Orphaner Dualscar were in alliance in unmatched terror and in competition unbridled Tempest. Either way, spoils were typically traded and shared. No levels were left for anyone else to gain. None of the levels. She would have the victims of your conquest walk the plank, while you would reap the custodial spoils. And while yet another partook not in revelry but necessity. She had to keep her fed to keep her calm, to keep her terrible voice down. If she were to raise it above a whisper, trolls would begin dying. First, the lesser bloods, those more psychically susceptible. If she raised it to a shout, all on the planet would die, land and sea dwellers alike. And if she were ever to get really upset, she might release the vast glob, a psychic shockwave that would exterminate every troll in the galaxy. In truth, it would be all too easy to solve the land dweller problem once and for all. You just need to lighten up on the feeding schedule for a while. Maybe you'd be a little too busy to bother with that hassle for once. Or maybe you could happen to be off your game for a spell. It happens even to the best sometimes. But nah, it would make her upset. More emotions, more problems. That's all you need. Sometime later, the Witch of Life takes her place in the land of dew and glass. Feffery, report to Aridin. <laughs> Are you in? Yeah. That took forever. I was getting worried. Kinda. Yes, it was a pretty close call and got kind of complicated. But Solix finally came through, and now I believe the full chain is complete. Man, that guy. He's a fucking drama machine. It is fucking pathetic. Your stupid fishy face is the drama machine that does nothing but whine and glob. Nah. Fuck! Sorry! 
Anyway, you shouldn't say that about him. He is a hero, and he saved my life. Yeah, sorry. I was just really worried and stressed out. I thought you were dead. And I didn't even get to thank you for saving my life, or really for anything. And I just spent all this time here worrying and thinking about stuff. And I decided I have something I want to tell you. <laughs> that I've been meaning to get off my nub for a while now. Oh, really? That's good. Actually, I have something I've been meaning to say to you, too. Whoa. Uh, really? Uh, what is it? You go first. Um, okay. But this isn't easy to say. Yeah, I know. It's okay. Maybe I will understand more than you think. We might even be saying the same thing. Okay, I hope so. I think... Now that we are both in this game, and have left our world behind, and you can no longer pose the danger to our people that you had always planned to, I think it is not really necessary for me to be your Moirail anymore. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, wait. Whoa, what? I'm really sorry, Aridan. It has just been so hard looking after you and keeping you out of trouble. It has taken its toll, and honestly, I am really exhausted. Fuck! This isn't what- I don't know. I wasn't expecting this at all. I'm not sure I can handle this. I'm sorry. It will be the best for both of us. We can just sort of be regular friends instead. No. Please don't. Look, I'm being serious here. Don't do this. I won't even use my weird accent while I type, okay? So you know I'm being really dead serious and honest about this. Uh, okay. I am being serious and honest too. See? Okay. Good. Are you sure you aren't being hasty about this? You've just been through a lot. I, I mean, we are supposed to be fated to be Moirails, aren't we? Isn't that how it works? You can't just throw all that away because you're sick of me. I am not sick of you, Aridan. I still really like you. In order to be destined for more religions, both people have to be on board, don't you think? But I cannot do it anymore. So I think it just wasn't meant to be all along. And really, you just don't need me anymore. You are free to do as you wish. We both are. I can't look after you anymore. I didn't ever need anyone to look after me! I was totally fucking fine, my ambitions were noble, and really, none of your fucking business, quite frankly, your majesty! And the only reason I put up with sticking my flipper in this fucking shithole quadrant with you was... Was what? Never mind! Tell me! Okay, fine. I apologize for losing my shit over this. I was just caught off guard as all. But maybe it's a good thing, really. Actually, I might be proposing the same thing, to be honest. Oh? Yeah. Fifth. Have you thought about, since you don't want to be pale with me no more, the possibility of some other type of arrangement with me? Uh, what do you mean? I mean... Something a bit more... kind of... reddish? Like... brighter red? Uh, no, I hadn't thought about it. Okay, well, what do you think about it? Now that you're thinking about it. Um... I really don't know about that. Why not? I thought you said you liked me! I do! But I don't know if it's really in that way. Couldn't it be, though? Don't you think there's room in your collapsing and expanding bladder-based aquatic vascular system for those feelings? I've never had a chance to consider anything like that. I have just spent all my time worrying about you and trying to keep you from killing everybody or hurting yourself. It took all my energy. I don't think I have anything left for those feelings either. Oh, God. What? I'm the biggest fucking idiot who ever lived! I can't believe I just 
opened up to you like a chump when I knew it was coming. I am one sad fucking brine sucker. Over emotional sappy trash. You're right, I'm not better than anybody. I'm worse than anybody. Everybody. All the buddies. Stop! God, will you just clam up for once in your life? Always carping and carping and carping! You go completely overboard with your emotions, always looking to reel in drama wherever you can! I am up to my gills in it! I just can't salmon the strength anemone more! I cannot believe you are doing the fish pun thing while you're breaking up with me! Real nice! Whoops! I mean, real nice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but really, this shouldn't be as bad as it sounds. When all is said and done, I am still your friend. We have left our world behind. Everyone is dead. And there's no use in worrying about it now. It's over. It is time to play this game and focus on building something new and exciting. So hang in there, Aridin. I have to go now. Solix is in serious trouble, and I have to go help him. Bye! Wait! Don't go! Bethery, oh. proceed to gate. You're free! Garcat, check on Solix. Bro, are you okay? Hey! Oh god, what have I done? Solix! Please tell me that's just honey! Please just be honey, please just be honey, please just be honey! <laughs> okay! Make believe time is over! Oh god, 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 oh god! It is all your fault. You couldn't get him in before the glob. Hey, you goddamn blubber and pansy. <laughs> Gamzik, indulge emotional theatrics. Gam, I need to talk to Car. Where is he? He isn't answering. He's uh, busy being slapped. Motherfucking senseless by the guy who likes knives. Uh, but I can relay what message you got, my brother. I don't feel comfortable with that. I have some serious feelings and problems here, and I need some advice. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel ya. He's pretty worked up, too. Why? Because our, uh, well, our good bro Solox just kicked the wicked motherfucking shit. What the fuck do you mean by that? Are you saying he's dead? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, God, fuck. Now will I feel like an asshole? Yeah, I'd say that an asshole is the thing that just about what everybody feels like. Carcat blames himself on it. Poor motherfucker. But I told him to be chill, because there's a miracle coming. I can feel it. That is the worst fucking advice but what an awful thing are you to say? Magic isn't real, stupid! Stop believing in it! I've got to believe at what my heart tells in me. Even if it's a fake thing. Honk. This is a lot of pointless rubbish, and isn't no emotional help for him. Or me either, for that matter. Put car on. Uh, I can't really think about intervening. Uh, the black frowning motherfucker kind of scares me. Uh, are you sure I can't help a brother up into his motherfucking chill? I don't know. It probably doesn't matter. My feelings seem petty and meaningless now. She had better things to worry about than my overwrought bullshit. Like the dead guy who sailed her. So forget it. Thanks anyway. Bro, my advice is... You just kick back and motherfucking snap into some rude elixir. And maybe get your wicked zone on. There. I said my piece. 
What the fuck are you fucking babbling about? Snatching ice cold, dog. Motherfucking chug that shit like like you and the bottle was reunited lovers. Are you recommending a beverage to me or something? Is that what this is? <laughs> yeah, man. Slam a fago. I don't how a fucking fago, you stupid fuck. Why would I keep that disgusting shit on hand? Are you motherfucking sure about that? Oh. Oh, God. You're right. I do. I totally forgot about it. You see, man? Mother fucking miracles. <laughs> Aridin, slam a fago. You prepare to kick back and motherfucking snap into some root elixir and maybe get your wicked zone on. It sure would be startling if what followed was a crudely drawn spit take accompanied by an odd short exclamation. Bruh! What? It's just soda. Not great, but not that bad either. What's the big deal? We all need to settle down here. <laughs>